Hey everybody, uh, I thought I'd try a little bit of different this time, uh, a little different process. I know some of you are having a little bit of an issue getting a hold of the book, so I thought I would do some um, lecture. This is a hybrid class, so lecture and then we just do lab on Thursdays. So uh, hopefully this is going to be uh, more, you know, a little bit easier for you and to the people that uh, are unable to get the book. Like I said, I'm in the process of writing some stuff and you'll see some of that in our Canvas shell as we go along. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I want to uh, open up a uh, PowerPoint. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up right now. We're going to share it and then I'm going to go ahead and start it. Uh, with uh, what I'm doing right now too, you'll be able to uh, Actually, it, it will uh, have a closed caption with it too, so uh, make sure you have that closed caption button on. I'm going to upload this to YouTube, so make it a little bit uh, better. Uh, I find that um, if I just do from Zoom, there's some weird stuff that happens with it. So anyways, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get going on this right now. So this is going to be kind of starting from square A, um, we've been challenged, uh, like, I, like some of you have been saying, uh, with the, the getting the book, you know, or, or I should say the getting the subscription. So uh, I want us to all be up to speed by the fourth week. So you'll see more and more of these videos going up and then there'll be some reading material for you to do. We'll get on track, we'll get through this together. So let's go ahead and uh, the book always wants to talk about objectives. I kind of look at them as, yeah, we should know this by the time this chapter is done, uh, but there's other things we should know too. So I don't want to limit it. Oh, this is all you're going to get. We should have, this is kind of like the minimum. Anytime you see objectives in any of my PowerPoints, this is going to be kind of, well, any of the PowerPoints, this is going to be kind of this is the minimum you should be understanding by the end of this uh, chapter. So uh, again, you know, let, let's it's kind of back up a little bit. So uh, they're uh, explaining the purpose of heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. Uh, identify the purpose of uh, vehicle air conditioning systems and uh, state of uh, their purpose, and explain the uh, basic operation of air conditioning uh, refrigerant system kind of covered a little bit of this already. Name the uh, two major types of refrigerant used in automotive uh, conditioning. Now, this is going to be, I'm going to update this because this uh, PowerPoint, uh, I don't know when it was actually created, but this will talk about uh, R12, uh, which really has uh, been uh, on the outs for years. And uh, we're really looking at 134A and our uh, 123YF right now. So we'll give you a little update on that as we go along. So uh, then identify the components of the uh, heating, uh, the vehicle heating system in state of that their, pur their purpose and explain the basic operation of heating system. So I, I, I really want you to think of air conditioning as more like air management or climate management, not so much just air conditioning. Um, there's a lot more to it, and we'll, as we'll see in this class as we go along. But, uh, you know, identify the components of the heat uh, of the vehicle's ventilation system and the state, their purpose, and this is really key. I mean, if we don't have airflow, we're really not going to have good heating or air conditioning, and we'll find this out as we go along through the semester. Okay, um, explain the basic operation of the ventilation system, uh, trace the development of the modern heating uh, ventilation and, and air conditioning systems, and discuss the envir environmental effects of certain types of refrigerant. And I'll be putting together a whole thing uh, for you uh, very, very soon. I'm almost wrapping it up right now on the, uh, the EPA compliance, and there's a lot of things that are part of that that I, I think beyond what the book says uh, that you need to know, okay? Uh, so 
basically it's HVAC. So uh, I really think we should be thinking not just in air conditioning, but we should thinking about the heating, the ventilation, and the air conditioning, all kind of packaged together. So it, it will cool or actually heat the air. And this is where I say it's more like air management, climate management. And we're also gonna remove the humidity out of it. Uh, the humidity, uh, you can have a real humid day and it just, you just feel terrible. I mean, you feel awful. Where if we can remove some of that humidity, it makes you feel much better. And, you know, if you really look at swamp coolers, is a lot of times what they call them, in hotter climates where really drier, we're actually putting moisture back in to make us feel better too. Remember that if we don't have enough moisture, we wouldn't be able to breathe. Uh, remove uh, dust and odors. Now, this is something that is uh, not really when air conditioning first come out. Uh, we, well, let's put it this way, uh, industry didn't really uh, do this. It, it wasn't until um, well, the 90s uh, that they started saying, hey, our houses have uh, filters in them. Why don't we have filters in cars? So that's where you're gonna have the filters uh, that we're gonna actually service too. So there's gonna be another part of it. And when we get deeper into the airflow, uh, you know, the, that part of it, we're going to actually start talking about, you know, servicing that part of it too. And you'll be surprised at how many people don't know that there's actually a filter inside their car to keep this, uh, the air cleaner. Okay. So, and then we're going to circulate treated air through the, uh, the vehicle itself. So, uh, the HVAC systems, you know, where are they located? They're pretty much all over because part of it is you know, of course uh, they used to call it firewalls you know but it's really at the bulkhead um, or sometimes they call it the cowl that's where the separation point between the uh, uh, the engine area and the actual uh, driver area or the passenger area um, so th this is where the separation point is and this is sometimes they they kind of uh, stop the firewall, you know, you know, kind of nomenclature because firewall uh, was kind of saying that hey, this is the wall to keep fire from getting into the rest of the car. Un you know, unfortunately, that doesn't happen. You know, if, if fire starts in the engine area, it can progress into the actual uh, cabin area or the uh, passenger area itself too. But these are just kind of nomenclatures that you normally say about that. So the three major areas uh, that are part of it, and this is where it comes to the, uh, the air you know, conditioning or the, uh, uh, you know, the management, as you call it like that. It's not just cooling. We have that refrigeration system. And we'll, when we get deeper into the different types in the semester, we'll kind of break down some uh, different parts of it too. So the refrigeration system, the heating system, and also the air delivery. So uh, I, I definitely want to share this with you. This is better than my drawings that you've seen in the past, but uh, this is uh, the air, you know, the refrigeration system we'll kind of start with right now. And we'll get deeper into this as we go along through the semester, but it's a closed system, okay? Uh, it actually uh, circulates refrigerant through the system. So we'll start, you know, I like to always look at the starting point as being close to the compressor because that's where really the compressor is like the heart of things. So we, we start at the compressor, we're gonna compress that refrigerant I mean, gas, okay? And, or, you know, whichever one it be, uh, the old R12, the 134A, or we get into uh, more, you know, to the one, one two, three YF or, any other uh, type of a blends they might have out there, it all kind of starts at the compressor area. So we're gonna start at the compressor, whether it be belt driven or if it's an electrical one like you have on your uh, hybrids and your electric vehicles. And it, we'll get deeper into that when we get into that part of the semester too. So we start here, we compress it up and we start circulating the refrigerant. And we're going to go through and we're going to go through our condenser 
and it does what it says it's going to do. It's going to condense down the refrigerant down into, uh, instead of a high pressure gas, we're going to go down to a high pressure liquid. And then we're going to go, and, and this is not always the case here. And I, I do want to say there's not always an inline filter, uh, but there's usually some kind of an expansion device. Now, this we'll get into the different types as we go along. There's um, the old expansion valves that they used to have, and there's some newer ones that are uh, in place. And, and we also need to talk about some of the fixed orifice uh, tube systems too. And then it goes through uh, to the expansion device and then we're going to go through the evaporator where a lot of the magic happens where we actually absorb the heat from the cab. And then we go through uh, on this particular system, this is gonna be more of a fixed orifice type system. This is gonna be an accumulator. Now they do have the accumulator position wrong on this and I'll, I'll show you that as we go along through this in semester. So there are two basic differences, but there are actually, you know, I would say there's two basic uh, types of expansion devices and we'll get into some of the particulars as we go through that part of the semester. And then we have the heat exchangers, device that transfers heat uh, uh, between the two liquids, you know, the liquid and gas. And then uh, common uh, exp uh, e examples are right here. So we're talking about the cooling part of it right now. So we're going to be, uh, just like your radiator, it is a heat exchanger. And we're taking uh, the heat from the radiator that takes the heat off the engine and we're, we're dissipating it out into the atmosphere. Uh, same thing happens with our uh, our evaporator uh, and our extra condenser. So we'll get deeper into this wig along. So there's two parts that are doing the heat exchanging. It would be your evaporator, which is inside the cab area of the vehicle or the passenger area. Uh, and also there's the condenser, which is actually out in front of the radiator to transfer that heat out also. So there's, uh, Three ma uh, major, I should say three, there's actually four uh, major uh, refrigerant components. There's the evaporator, and this is just saying major, there's not saying everything. There's the evaporator, there's the compressor, there's the condenser, and also a expansion device, which a lot of times they call it a flow restrictor. And that's a lot what is some of work. So the evaporator, it's located uh, in, you know, in the free refrigerant flow uh, where it kind of, I, uh, I really am not excited about the way they put this. It's really not, and this will really, it says it's where the ref uh, refrigerant flow begins. And the flow really begins at the compressor. I'm gonna be totally honest with you on that. This is. This is where I disagree with this, and it, you'll see my input as we go along. It contains internal uh, passages uh, for the refrigerant. It con uh, contains external uh, fin passage for air, and sometimes called a heat exchanger. It is a heat exchanger. Evaporator uh, causes the refrigerant to turn into a vapor, uh, turn from a vapor. <laughs> into a vapor from, uh, from you know, or a gas. And this is where you're gonna see as we go along deeper, we're talking about the evaporator, how that heat exchange happens. The refrigerant absorbs heat from the air. And this is where I want you to, and I've talked about this a little bit, but I want you to understand that it, the heat is attracted to cold. It's not the other way around, it's not that we're cooling the air, we're actually taking the heat out of the air. And if you understand that, that's gonna help you a lot when you start talking about, uh, um, when we start talking about, uh, yeah, when we start talking about, you know, how air conditioning works, how heating systems work. And we'll, we'll break that down as we go along. Because how does the evaporator dehumidify? Well, moisture in the air collects on the evaporator surface, and then it's gonna got it's kind of it will actually start the moisture will collect in that 
area, and this, and this is key too, we'll get deeper into this, but if moisture is not allowed to drain out, it's gonna actually take up you know, and start bacteria to grow. And we, this is really key because that little hole, that drain in the evaporator needs to be clear. If it's not clear, you know, I, I find that uh, during the winter you don't use the air conditioner as much, uh, and you know, spiders and bugs start to make their nest right through that evaporator hole because you know we're using the heater more, and it's nice warm area, and it actually will plug that area up, or even just dirt from the uh, road can actually collect them up there too. So we'll get deeper into that as we go along, but it, and we take that humidity from the evaporator and it kind of falls off the fence and it, you know, the kind of little droplets go down and then it goes out inside, outside the uh, vehicle. Um, you don't want it dripping inside and we'll talk more about this as we go along, but um, you want it nice and clear. So when you uh, see moisture on the ground or it looks like water going out, which it is actually water, you want to make sure that it's clear. If it's clear, maybe a little dust uh, and dirt particles that are collected from the evaporator course should be a whole lot, but that's a good sign. That means we're, take, we're dehumidifying the air. But if we are starting to get other colors to it, like maybe red or green, it's a very po good possibility that coolant is leaking uh, through the actual uh, the heater, heater, heater core. And that heater core uh, is, you know, it started to leak and that's not a good thing. So we'll talk, as we get into the heating section, we'll talk more about that. So, so the compressor, really, that's kind of like the heart, the pump, uh, is same thing, you know, I, I should say same thing, but it's almost like a engine. And basically what it's doing is it's drawing in the refrigerant and then it pumps it into higher pressure and it pushes it out in a high pressure gas. And we'll talk um, more about the compressor as we go along. Now, the uh, compressor can be belt driven and the compressor can also be electrically driven uh, through a electrical circuit. And this is where it really uh, has changed over the years. We used to just have belt driven uh, compressors. Uh, now we actually have electrically driven compressors. The condenser, it's right out front of the radiator. Um, we'll talk about the care of the condenser and how you can actually help the, your customers just by doing some simple things with the condenser to make sure we have good airflow going across it. So this is just dissipating the heat out into the atmosphere uh, as we go along. So condenser process, it just takes that heat that you absorb from the uh, evaporator and it takes and it puts it out in front. We have a fan circuit, whether it be electrical or mechanical, that draws the air across the condenser and also the radiator, and then it kind of pushes it out into the atmosphere. So this flow restrictor, as they call it, is actually the expansion device, uh, whether it be an expansion valve or a fixed orifice, and there's the fixed orifice has changed over the years, and I'll talk about some more updated stuff from, from some updated material I got from the Max, you know, the Max uh, 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 training that I went through. Okay, so fixed orifice is you know basically what it says. Um, I'm not going to cover too much of this because we're going to get deeper into it as the semester goes along. Uh, but uh, here is a little bit better of a picture of an expansion device type system. This one actually has the compressor, the condenser, uh, the uh, receiver dryer, which is what really, I want you to think, uh, expansion valve, receiver dryer, uh, fixed orifice tube, uh, accumulator. I want you to think that way, and we'll talk, tell you the importance of that. Please remember that we don't always have an inline filter uh, in the systems. And, uh, other refrigeration system components, you know, the, the accumulator, the receiver dryer, which, you know, we've seen the receiver dryer just a minute ago. And then we have a desiccant bag, which is inside the receiver dryer or in the accumulator. Not many 
um, unless you go into heavy duty equipment, have a sight glass, because uh, there was a, a, well, there's some issues, and I'll, I'll explain that as we get into talking about the accumulators and also the receiver drivers. And a, some systems actually have a muffler right off of the compressor, that's to keep down the noise and also the vibration. And then a metal tube or a flexed hose, you're gonna find flex hoses all over the place. Um, the engine moves, and if we had solid rigid uh, tubing all the way through the system, uh, you would have cracks in the tubing because with the engine moving, we need a little bit of flexibility. And of course, the uh, big guy there, the refrigerant. All right, so uh, the accumulator or receiver diary, it holds a little extra uh, refrigerant. We'll get deeper into that as we go along. And it contains that desk, and like I said before, and it's located. Um, now, it depends if it's an accumulator or receiver dryer. You're going to see the accumulators more towards the evaporator. It's going to be really kind of, I, I, usually you're going to see them in the inlet to the uh, evaporator, uh, whereas the receiver dryer is going to be more closely to, and you know, we'll get deeper into that, the receiver dryers, because some of the receiver dryers you won't even find on cars. Uh, they're actually on your expansion uh, uh, valve systems. They're actually integral to the actual, uh, you know, the con uh, condenser. So we'll get into that too as we go along. So the idea of the conden uh, the desiccant, okay, the idea of the is to absorb moisture. And one of the things you do not want in the refrigeration system to have a lot of moisture. If you have moisture in the system, that is going to cause major problems. Uh, you're gonna have acids start to form. Uh, you're gonna have freezing up going on, and it's important, and we'll get deeper into the importance of the desk and bag as we go across too. But it's located uh, in the accumulator, or it might be even located in the receiver dryer. Sight glasses, uh, you know, this is really, uh, I have not seen sight glasses on uh, cars for a long time. I still see them in heavy duty equipment like your buses and, uh, and also some of your trucks. Uh, but that's kind of getting on the wayside too, even on your, uh, we'll actually say the transportation refrigeration systems, it's not a big thing. In early days, that was how we charged uh, our refrigeration systems, was through the sight glass, and that's when we had the old R12 or R122. Uh, now, mufflers, this is, like I said before, it's, it's reducing the noise of the actual uh, refrigeration systems. Uh, usually uh, part of a hose assembly coming off the compressor. That's just to bring down the noise uh, that we have. So metal tubing and flexible hoses, yes, you'll find them all over the place. They're gonna be on the high side and the low side. Uh, I'll show you some key signs, not always that that will be the you know what it is, but there can be a difference in the size of the lines on the refrigeration system too. And we'll get into that as we go into talking more about the hoses and the lines that are a part of it. Now, the refrigeration, refrigerant, now, uh, this is where I, got, I wanted to update a few things too. Uh, this, this is kind of like that transfer unit. This is the liquid transfer, just like your coolant in your heating, uh, in the uh, cooling of the engine, it's, it's very similar, uh, very, very similar. You're taking a medium and we're taking and using a transportation device to actually bring it to another spot. And that's what we're doing when it comes to refrigerant. We're just taking that and we're circulating it through and we're absorbing the heat from the evaporator inside the um, cab area or the passenger compartment. And then we're taking it and transfer it out to the condenser, which the condenser is actually pushing it out. Now, there are, and I'll get deeper into this as we go along, uh, the R12, you know, I would say, unless you're working on some older cars and it's very, very expensive, uh, it, you are not going to see too much of this. You're probably going to see most common is your R1348 for now. Uh, R1234YF 
is getting to where it's starting to be phased in. Now there are other blends. I'll, I'll talk to you about the SNAP program through EPA and as we go along in the semester. And of course the R744, which is carbon dioxide, which uh, here uh, we'll get in uh, a little, you know, I'll talk about this also, but this uh, gas, you know, is has to be very, very high pressures. And uh, you might find these more so in your refrigeration units, in your supermarkets and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's not uh, very common in the mobile or the car type of you know, system like that because how pr much pressure it is. So refrigerant, a lot of times people call it ref uh, Freon. Now, a lot of times you'll see, I, I need to put more Freon on my, it, it's just, that's the um, kind of the trade name of R12. Uh, this was used a lot of, uh, before the 90s. Uh, it, like I said, it's been phased out um, as a, a viable re uh, refrigerant for vehicles because of its, um, which we'll talk more when I get in my presentation on um, uh, the uh, EPA 609 uh, training and stuff like that. Uh, but it's you know, definitely, you're not gonna see it as much. Now, the R134A is gonna probably be your most common. And this is pr pr pretty much until we get our R123YF, uh, 34YF, I mean. Uh, that will be uh, a, 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 you know, that will be the next refrigerant. Uh, uh, one, two, three, uh, four, A, it, I'm sorry, one, uh, three, 34, A is really, um, it, it's not, it does have the same uh, problems as R12 does. R12 is ozone depleting, whereas one, uh, 134, A is not ozone depleting, but it is have a climate change index on it. We'll get more into that as I do the next presentation. Uh, or the, or the presentation on it. And this is going to be the new one. This is, n it is not a replacement. I hate when they say it's a replacement. It is not a drop in a replacement. You cannot retrofit 134A into, uh, you know, you cannot re re take uh, 123YF and put it in an R134A system. There is no retrofit as of this time for this. There is, uh, issues, uh, I, I don't want to put it that way, there is concerns about 123YF that w I'll talk about as we go along. Now, refrigerant oils, there is different oils. I, I started off with this a little earlier when we were in the lab talking about the importance of this right lubrication for the right system. And it has a lot to do with the compressor. And uh, also, it has a lot to do if it's in a luxury vehicle or a hybrid vehicle versus a, a regular conventional uh, gasoline, gaseous fuel type vehicles. There is some problems with, <laughs> there is deep problems with putting the wrong refrigerant oil in the system. Now, some of the base, this is just a tip of the iceberg here. So. There is PAG oil, there's old mineral oil, and there's the PO oil. And we'll get deeper into this as we go along. Uh, I'll update on the 123YF oils too. So heat exchange, uh, this is for your, your regular uh, car cooling system. Um, this is where we do some of the magic again, uh, right over in here for the heater core where we're going to actually take and warm up the cab. Again, it's, it's actually displacing or the, allowing the heat to go uh, attract the cold, kind of bring that out, and then we're going to warm up the cab area. So some of the major components, of course, is the cooling system, the heater core, and some vehicles will actually have a shutoff valve, whether it may be mechanical, uh, which were the old ones, or a door or a, um, a, a, a vacuum operated uh, shutoff valve. It really was, de depending on the system that it was um, designed, 
the type of design of the system it was. And we'll get deeper into that too. Again, this is just an overview of some of the th stuff. And then we have uh, the heating system uses a medium uh, that does not change from liquid to vapor. This is just coolant going around. Uh, and it is also a closed system. And it uses the coolant, uh, cooling system to supply heat into the cab area. Um, so there are major cooling system components. Uh, we go over this uh, uh, you know, a little bit in our introductory classes, uh, and I, they go in the engine classes. It goes a little bit farther into it. Uh, engine performance, I go into it a little bit also. So there's water jackets. There's the coolant. There's a cooling pump. Uh, the radiator, the thermostat, which is the control, uh, and also the heater core, and of course what they said, the shutoff and uh, Hot coolant is uh, diverted into the heater core, and it is a sealed uh, container. You can have heater cores that actually do leak, and this is one of the inspections that we do uh, a lot of times. And it has internal patches uh, from the uh, engine for the engine uh, coolant. It has external patches for air. So the air again, I want to you know, say it again. Uh, air circulation is very important, even on the heating type system like that. And depending depending on the system, you could have a heater shut off valve. You could have uh, through uh, vacuum operated. It could be. Uh, you know, you're you know taking and clo closing out doors. Uh, you could have a mechanical type one too on some of the older systems too. There are different types of coolant. Uh, there is you know, you know, what one of the big uh, bases of it is uh, ethylene glycol or uh, propylene glycol. Are part of the mixture, and you want to make sure your uh, blends are 50 50 unless otherwise uh, documented in the service manuals. Some systems actually do a 60 40 uh, blend on them too, and this helps prevent corrosion and um, helps with the tr heat transfer too. Other uh, devices, you know, that, you know, part, and, and this is where our air, you know, our air conditioning, our cooling part of it, are part of the heating and part of, uh, again, like I, I said a little bit earlier about dehumidifying, we use our air conditioning even um, when you, well, when you go into defrost mode, you're going to use the a cooling, you know, the air conditioning system. We're going to take and help dehumidify, take that moisture at the windshields. Because when you have that you know, nice cold morning and your windows are all fogged up, uh, it would take a long time for the heater to actually de you know, clear up the fog up your windows. Whereas if you have an air conditioning, uh, working air conditioning system, it's going to defrost a lot faster like that. So we have uh, rear window defoggers, front window defoggers, I don't put this down here too, but the mirror defrosters, we also have seat uh, heaters. Believe it or not, we have seat heaters. Uh, there's actually heaters for your steering wheel too on some of your high-end class on cars like that. So air uh, delivery, yeah, again, we gotta get that air circulating so we get the heat exchanged through the system. Uh, we got to get good ventilation going through. We need to get uh, it actually filtered as we go along through. And a lot of times they call this the duct work for the air for the uh, in the air management systems and we go like that. So there is an intake system. We'll get into where the intake systems are. Uh, you sometimes that's where the filter is actually placed too. Uh, but we can have the filters placed in other spots also. So we have the air filter. Sometimes you'll have them right at the grid area here. This is where you want to make sure all the leaves and stuff are out of the way or else it's going to uh, cause your airflow to be uh, you know, less than you should have. And, that, and then if you have low airflow, that's going to cause either your heating side or your cooling side to uh, degrade and it's not going to be as... Uh, strong 
uh, airflow. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you some stories as we get into these filters as we go along. Now your blower motor, of course, is a big part of it. That's the fan that's moving things around and it kind of it draws air and pushes air around. Um, this is, you know, what a fan, one type of fan looks like. This is an electrical fan and it actually is the one that pulls the air and moves the air around. The duct work is all over. Um, I, I really like pictures and this is kind of giving the idea. This is the actual uh, heater and uh, also part of the uh, air conditioning box. Uh, we have a bunch of doors inside. We're going to have, you know, directing airflow to the different parts, either out the vent this way, or going to the defrost mode, or going to the floor. So uh, this really is a key part in either your heating or your uh, cooling of the, your, your air inside the, the actual vehicle itself. And you can see the blower motor right over here. This is actually showing you part of it and all the wiring going to across as we go along. One of the things you won't see as much is actually uh, you know, a vacuum tubing and stuff like that that we had back in the day, like that. So the doors are movable, so the next uh, slide shows you door operation. These are diverter doors. Uh, these can be either vacuum driven, mechanically driven, or we can actually have them uh, now is more common to be electrically driven, little electric motors. And then you have the vents going out, you know, the, the word diverts, you know, sometimes we could refer to as registers. So if you ever hear me say, check the temperature at the register, and that's what I'm asking for. So then uh, on our air conditioning side, we do have, you know, the air conditioning compressor. Uh, if we have a um, a cycling clutch system, you're going to have a, a, a compressor clutch that engage, engage and, and disengages. But uh, you, you know, some of your compressors will all be on all the time, and I'll show you how that works with those kind of systems too. And then we have the sh heater shut off, whether it be through a door or whatever, and the blower motor operation, which you know, the blower motor can have different speeds, and how that's controlled, we'll get into that too. And like I said earlier, the blend door and the diverter door positions and all. And then you have your control panel. This is where it gets into the electronics and uh, some of the other systems, some of the vacuum controls right at your, um, at your controls. So here we have our air conditioning and then the temperature control and, and that which is key. And then this one does not have uh, what I call, well, there's called zone control where you can actually have uh, like on my on my hybrid, we can actually have two different temperatures. The passenger can have one temperature, and the uh, driver can have a t uh, another temperature. We can actually go as far as uh, if you're like your minivans or SUVs, you can actually have temperature control, different temperature controls in the back too, or right behind you, you can have temperature controls also. So these are just some of the things that so we'll be talking about as the you know the days come up. Then we had old uh, mechanical devices, you know, cables and levers. Uh, a lot of that's gone away. And then vacuum diaphragm, vacuum valves. I'll, I'll go over this, probably not as much as we'll go over the electronic controls because it's, it's getting to the point where all the air conditioning systems, or most of them, are going to more electrically driven and all. And the cables and levers, and this was back in the day where we had uh, mechanical levers here and it was a lever that just switched back and forth now it's good to be push button and dials uh, or you can actually just dial in your temperature you want it to be and the the, the actual the computer uh, yes we have computers and air conditioning will take over from there and it will divert air it will do everything for you And then a vac this was the old vacuum diaphragms. You actually had a diaphragm here, and it, it would actually pull an arm to actually do uh, move a door uh, in a certain direction, or to turn off the uh, the actual heater uh, the he heater control valve. It would shut that off, so you wouldn't have any kind of heat circulating inside. 
And electrical switches, yes. We have a lot of different electrical switches that control the blower motor, the compressor. Uh, if it has a uh, cycling clutch system, it will have and control the cr uh, clutch. And uh, other, you know, you know, you could have doors moving and all that too. So, and it'll actually turn the AC on and off. Uh, so what is HVF modes? There's different modes that we will be talking about and we'll get deeper into as we go across. Um, we'll be talking about max AC mode, vent mode, uh, then heat mode, and defrost mode. And I'll get deeper into this as we go along. I think this is a good spot to stop. And then we'll go ahead and look forward to my next video on air conditioning as we go along. But this is, again, just an introduction uh, class. And we'll go deeper into each little part of this introduction as we go along. I hope to see you soon. Take care. And until next time, be good. And we'll see you in class. All right. Bye for now.